the basic logarithmic function has the form y equals log base b of x. This function is the inverse of the exponential function, and to understand it, first let's talk about the exponential function y equals b to the x power. So I will write down the exponential function y equals b to the x power. In this function, b represents the base, and this base has to be a positive constant that is not equal to 1. Then x represents the exponent, and y represents the result of raising base b to exponent x. For example, y equals 2 to the x power is an exponential function, and the base 2 is positive and is not equal to 1. Now, the logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function, and to get an inverse, we need to interchange x and y. So, here again we have the exponential function y equals b to the x power. To get the logarithmic function, in place of y we will write x, and in place of x we will write y. So now, as you see, y represents the exponent, and x represents the result. And now, to solve this function for y, we need to use logarithm. Then we write y equals log base b of x. So this is a notation we use when we need to solve this function for y. Now in this logarithmic function, just like in the exponential function, b represents the base, and the base has to be positive and not equal to 1. Then y represents the exponent, and x represents the result. An example of a logarithmic function can be y equals log base 2 of x. In this function, 2 is the base, x is the result, and y is the exponent. So a logarithmic function is the exponent to which the base b must be raised to obtain the result x. So to find a logarithm means to find an exponent. Now, you know that we can take an exponential equation and write it in a logarithmic form, and we can also take a logarithmic equation and write it in exponential form. For example, 5 to the second power equals 25 is an exponential equation. In this equation, 5 is the base, 2 is the exponent, and 25 is the result. Then the logarithmic form will be log base 5 of 25 equals 2. Down here, the base is 5, the exponent is 2, and the result is 25. Now, let's see an example of a logarithmic equation. For example, log base 3 of 81 equals 4. Here, 3 represents the base, 4 represents the exponent, and 81 represents the result. When we raise 3 to the 4th power, we get 81. Then the exponential form is 3 to the 4th power equals 81. And just like the equation above, 3 represents the base, 4 is the exponent, and 81 is the result. Now, let's see how we can evaluate logarithms. Let's say we want to evaluate log base 4 of 16. So, in a logarithm, we are given the base and the result, and we need to find the exponent. So, we need to ask 4 to what power equals 16? That would be 2. So, then log base 4 of 16 equals 2. In the next example, we will evaluate log base 4 of 64. So, 4 to what power is equal to 64? That would be 3. In the next example, we will evaluate log base 7 of 1 over 49. So then, 7 to what power is 1 over 49? 
that would be negative 2 because 7 to the negative 2 equals 1 over 7 squared and that makes 1 over 49. In the next example, we will evaluate log base 25 of 5. So 25 to what power is equal to 5? That would be 1 half. And this is because 25 raised to 1 half is the same as square root of 25, which equals 5. And now let's evaluate one more logarithm, and this will be log base 9 of 1 over 9. So then 9 to what power is 1 over 9? That would be negative 1. And this is because 9 raised to negative 1 equals 1 over 9. Now let's see some basic properties of logarithms. The first one is log base b of b equals 1. According to this property, we can say that log base 5 of 5 equals 1. And this is because 5 raised to the first power equals 5. The second property is log base b of 1 equals 0. For example, we can say that log base 5 of 1 equals 0. And this is because 5 raised to 0 equals 1. So again, a positive number raised to 0 equals 1. The next property is log base b of b to the x power equals x. For example, log base 7 of 7 squared equals 2. And this is because 7 to the second power equals 7 to the second power. Let's write this to the right. 7 squared equals 7 squared. And now the last property is b raised to the exponent log base b of x equals x. So just like above, when this base is the same as this base, then this result is the same as this result. For example, 3 to the exponent log base 3 of 9 equals 9. If we evaluate this logarithm, then 3 to what power makes 9? That would be 2, so this exponent is equal to 2. Then 3 to the second power equals 9. So these are the four basic properties of logarithms, and now let's talk about the graphs of logarithmic functions. So we know that in a logarithmic function, the base b has to be positive and not equal to 1. When the base b is a number greater than 1, like in this example, then the function is an increasing function. But when the base b is a number between 0 and 1, like in this example, then the function is a decreasing function. So in the example to the left, we have the graph of the function y equals log base 2 of x. In this table, you see a few points that belong to this graph. For example, when x is 0 0.5, y is negative 1. And this is because 2 raised to negative 1 equals 1 half or 0 0.5. When x is 1, y is 0 because 2 to the 0 power equals 1. So in this table, y represents the exponent and x represents the result. Also, when x increases, y also increases. So when the base is a number greater than 1, then the logarithmic function is increasing. Now let's talk about the domain and the range. The domain is any number greater than 0, and the range is any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the domain contains all the numbers that x can take, and the range all the numbers that y can take.
Now recall that y represents the exponent and just like in the exponential function, in a logarithmic function, the exponent can be any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. However, when we raise a positive base to any exponent, the result will always be positive. For example, let's raise this base 2 to a negative exponent, like negative 3. This will be equal to 1 over 2 to the third power which makes 1 over 8. Now, let's raise 2 to the 0 power. 2 to the 0 power is 1. And now, let's raise 2 to a positive exponent, like 2 to the 3rd power. This will be equal to 8. So, notice that the exponent can be negative, positive, or 0. However, the result is always positive. So then, because the domain always consists of positive numbers, the graph always stays to the right of the y-axis. And now let's talk about the graph of the function y equals log base one half of x. In this function, because the base is a number between 0 and 1, this function is decreasing. And just like in the previous case, the domain is any number greater than 0 and the range is any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. To the right we have a table that contains the coordinates of a few points that belong to this graph. For example, when x is 4, y is negative 2. And that is because 1 half raised to the exponent negative 2 will give us the result 4. So, if we take 1 half and we raise it to exponent negative 2, then if we flip this fraction and we write it as 2 over 1, the exponent will become positive 2. And then 2 over 1 is 2 and 2 to the second power equals 4. Now, let's talk about the relationship between the graph of an exponential function and the graph of a logarithmic function. In the figure to the left, we have two graphs. One is the graph of y equals log base 2 of x, and the other one is the graph of y equals 2 to the x power. These two functions are inverses of each other, and inverse functions are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. Now, recall that to get the inverse of a function, we need to interchange x and y. So, if on this graph we have a point with the coordinates 1 and 2, and we reflect this point about the line y equals x, then we get a point on the other graph with the coordinates 2 and 1. Now, to the right, we have the graphs of the functions y equals log base 1 half of x, and y equals 1 half to the power of x, and these functions are also inverses of each other and are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. And now let's talk about two special logarithms. One of them is called the common logarithm and the other one the natural logarithm. These two logarithms are used in many real life applications and they have special notations. To the left we have the common logarithm, and this is a logarithm that has base 10. When the base is 10, we usually don't write it, so in place of y equals log base 10 of x, we just write y equals common logarithm of x. So let's say we want to evaluate the common logarithm of 100. Then we just have to remember that if we don't see the base, then the base is 10. Then we have to ask, 10 to what power makes 100? That would be 2. So, the common logarithm of 100 equals 2. Now, to the right, we have the natural logarithm, and this is a logarithm with base e. Then, when the base is e, instead of writing y equals log base e of x, we write y equals natural logarithm of x. So, let's say we need to evaluate natural logarithm of 1. 
So when we see ln, we need to remember that the base here is e. Then e to what power is equal to 1? That would be 0. So we can say that the natural logarithm of 1 equals 0. Now, I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching and please come back for more math content.